Find functional hilarity at the Biffa Emporium. Girl, it's what I heard. Allegedly. It's just the word. Allegedly. It's on the street. Allegedly. I sing to the beat. Allegedly. Lee, lee, lee. Allegedly. Lee, lee, lee. Allegedly. Lee, lee, lee. Allegedly. Oh, you know, it's the middle of the night and I can't sleep. So let's listen to Reasonably Shady, because nothing will knock you out faster. They opening up the episode begging for good reviews. They said, if you got something negative to say, email us, but don't give us any negative reviews. Okay, Alpha, I'll save my opinions for here. I won't give you a negative review. They said they tickets are selling out, y'all. Anybody going to see Reasonably Shady live? Anybody who's going, honey, get down in the comments and tell me how it was when you get back. I think it's this weekend. I'm interested to see what type of show they would put on. I'm interested to see the set design. Oh, Giselle's dad is coming. You see, I'd have to pull him off to the side and ask him what he really thought about Jamal Bryant. When you said six baby mamas, was that hyperbole or did you mean six baby mamas? And he the type that'll tell it all. I actually wish I was going. I would love to see this up close and personal. But what is our reasonably shady moment of the week? So Giselle mad that one trainer told her trainer what she said on the podcast about how her trainer was telling her, I don't think you ready for this advanced jump rope class. She's like, I'm supposed to be able to say whatever I want without people running and telling that. So basically what you're saying is the people that are actually in your life find you irrelevant. Hmm. Sounds about par. Of course, Rob Dixon would say, that's like violating bro code. Not girl code. Bro code. This is why we listen. Well, this is why I listen. For the hidden lesbonics. I mean, I don't know what could be more peppermint patty than that violates bro code. Wait, hold on. I think I got an Adidas flip-flop in here. It was this lesbian. That statement was this lesbian. Rob's putting some built-ins in her office. What do you need an office for? You're getting kicked off the show after this season. I don't really know if your cap business is going to need an office in a couple years, but okay. She painted all of her doors black. You know, it could be really nice. It could be, but it's Rob. So I don't know. Oh God, now Caprice is gonna buy black paint. That's what you need, black doors in that garish pink house. I love how when Robin describes how Juan calls her, she says, Rob, Rob, just like I do. Everybody calls her Rob Dixon. Rob's shady moment is while she was getting built-ins in her office, her contractor shot a nail into a pipe and now her house is leaking. But fortunately, they caught it early so it didn't cause a lot of water damage. And the cabinets weren't up yet so the contractor was able to fix it for them. I know Giselle did not ask Robin when you think you're going to be done with your house while you're still in an unfinished bar. However, now we get to the fact that that J Envy's wife apparently was faking orgasms for a decade. I don't know where to begin. So for 10 years, he was just hunching on you. Y'all wasn't making love. Just hunching. Mm. I mean, I always knew he wasn't shit, but... Why are they running for Will and Jada? I've noticed they've been putting their business in the street too. Y'all trying to have another season of that reality show nobody watched? Rob has a lot of questions. He's okay with her saying this. I honestly, I feel like in 10 years, did you even want an orgasm? <laughs> you ain't said shit for 10 years, did it really matter? I just, what kind of marriage is this? Y'all got 50, 11 kids, 10 years, you just, mom was the word. Were you just trying to work on your acting skills? I mean, 10 years, that had to be a personal choice. Did you just not want them to spend any more time on top of you? Like what? 10 years, that means you didn't give a shit. 
The first couple times is on him. I'm sorry. Once we get to five, six, seven, ten years, no, that's you. That's you. Was it a, the dick so small this is never going to happen? Like, what, 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 for ten years? And you married this man. She said she was faking because she wanted him to be happy. That would make sense if you were never going to see him again. But for 10 years, you weren't able to, you know, guide or cajole, redirect. Oh, they trying to sell a book. That's why they putting their business in the street. 10 years? So you putting up with DJ Envy and you don't even get an orgasm for your troubles. Girl, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. Why are you really with him? He can't possibly be that likable. They've been married for 20 years, but apparently she didn't know her own body. Girl, get in the shower with one of the massagers and hit pulsate. It ain't that difficult to figure out. Now they saying it's not his fault. It stopped being his fault after the first three months of faking. If you gonna fake the funk, you gonna get fake funk. Oh, there are a whole lot of celebrity wives out here that are telling too much information. Just say Jada. Huh? She went right to Red Table. Oh, we actually got some tea. So they start talking about BravoCon and Giselle was talking about her first year's experience and Rob wasn't invited. Fascinating. I mean, I can see why she wasn't invited. She wasn't no draw. Oh, so all of Potomac is going to be there this time rather than just two. And they only sent just two because they were still new. And that was three years ago. So yeah, they were probably on like season four, maybe. So they get to talk about Mike Tyson not having charges pressed against him for pummeling that guy on the plane. And Rob gone say, oh, I couldn't imagine getting hit by that big old paw. <laughs> Why you got to call it a paw? He does kind of give bear. I mean, I'm sure he was growing when he was gnawing on Evander's ear. Why are they going into old tea? All the current hot topics they could talk about. Now they talk about the guy that was dead in the club. Oh my God. This is the same club that they held their season two premiere party at is where we had a propped up body. I thought Potomac was high end. Oh, they know the owners. Have them on the show. Have them on the show. How did this come to pass? Girl, they were charging $40 at the door. $40 at the door. I thought funerals were free. You got to cough up $40 just to grieve? Wait a minute. So now we get to talk about VH1 shows and they reminisce about when they used to play music videos but Gabrice and Gabrissi ain't going to watch Basketball Wives because Evelyn isn't on? You like her colorist ass? Why am I not surprised? Feces of a feather flushed together. Ooh, Rob Dixon's about to get profound and give us eight sentences we should live our lives by. If you can attach, you can detach. Giselle says, that reminds me of when I thought I was on a date. Why am I not surprised you would think you were on a date, but you weren't? Oh, he asked her, when are you leaving? Mm, like most of the men in your life. He said, yes, when are we going to disconnect? Girl, he put you out that hotel room and back on the plane home like he was the prime minister of Turks and Caicos. You know, Rob, you really thought you was coming to us with some great cranial catharsis. This is shit any 28-year-old would know. And that was the wisdom according to Rob Dixon. But you forgot one. Live in your truth. But now let's get to Carlos King and Monique Samuels giving us the tea on love and marriage, D.C. Oh, we keeping it in Potomac today. So we open with Carlos singing Momo's praises, and I agree with most of it. However, I can't believe you haven't called her a force multiplier. You're not going to say force multiplier? So he got in her DMs the second she quit the show. So the first question is, why'd you leave Poto Mac? Momo said she came on the show to show off black love, but when the hate started happening off camera and began to bleed on, she couldn't take it no more. She said when they gave me the crappy hotel during the last reunion, I knew it was over. So they said, 
oh, we put you in a different hotel because you were bringing your parrot, which they asked her to bring. Monique called the hotel and they took birds. She said this is just like when they told Nene to show up in black, but the Ryuyu color was white. Girl, Carlos King is doing Nene's work for her with this podcast. So Momo said the production was out to get her and fortunately she found out she was in the wrong hotel and corrected it so she wouldn't have been late for filming the next morning. I could see him pulling it. She said they wanted her to show up to the reunion pissed off. That's why they did it. Get her off kilter off her game so that Candace and Gabrissi would be able to double team her a little easier. They wanted to paint Monique as aggressive. But now we see the next season. Candace is getting into physical altercations with other people, throwing things at other people. So who was the real aggressor? Who's the common denominator? C.D. Candace Dillard, common denominator. Hmm. Carlos said Giselle seemed intimidated by you. Giselle is intimidated by life. Giselle is intimidated of being an old maid. Giselle is intimidated by the spinsterhood that's been thrust upon her. Giselle is intimidated by good fashion choices. The only thing that doesn't intimidate Giselle is Rob Dixon. Giselle honestly seems intimidated by her children. Monique says she didn't know anybody on the show. She wasn't even friends with Charissi. You know, I think if they just took that and said, we've got five new women that are trying to make a friendship rather than act like they were a solid group all this time, it might be better more authentic. She thought she was making friends with Charisse, but then her actual friend Gail was the one who started creating the rumors. You remember Gail with the messed up teeth and the cheap outfits? Momo said, look, there were really two shows going on. There was the show on TV and then the social media show because I was going live, Gail was going live, Gabrice and Rob were going live, rumors here, tweets there instigation on Instagram. It was true. After every episode, there was an online after show. Monique said Gabrice tried to say Chris was cheating on her, but because it wouldn't stick, it didn't make it to the show. I believe that too. And I believe she's doing the same thing with Candace's Chris this season. Apparently she ain't mad at Andy Cohen because he said, look, they trying to gaslight you. So stand in what you believe. If he told her, if that's what you believe happened with the fight, then stick with that. And then they showed the footage and Monique was right. Did she give Candace a genuine apology? I don't think so. I, I think Monique said she was sorry, but Candace earned that ass whooping. Monique said, I decided to leave the show after part three of the reunion because they were still trying to paint Chris as aggressive and didn't talk about the fact why he went live in the first place because the heifers admitted there was a plot to say that that wasn't his child. So Monique turned Carlos down the first time he pitched Love and Merge DC to her. Ooh, Monique says she likes Carlos's crew better. She said, I didn't have to sage my house every time they left. I wonder what crew she talking about. Is she talking about Michaels? Don't grab that bussy. Don't grab that bussy. I always knew there had to be a reason that Monique kept that secret from Ashley and deleted that footage. Oh, Monique said she was told her marriage was too perfect and she said, well, why aren't Lisa Vanderpump and Kyle Richards getting the same notes? All we see is their happy union. Good point. Carlos says Love and Marriage DC is giving you a black 90210 feel, very different than Huntsville. I hope so, because Huntsville has turned into the Mel show. Monique said everybody's earning their check, Rob. Everybody's bringing their own story, Gabrissi. Also, they're coming into this as new friends rather than acting like they've been knowing each other. Oh, that's right, Carlos King's new series starts Saturday and Momo's gonna be his first guest. Well, I'ma be tuning in. Oh, Monique was offered a spot on Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip and she turned it down. Guess she wasn't interested in that lull chat. Monique said, Andy congratulated me on Love and Marriage DC when the show leaked. However, the only people I've heard from from Potomac are Ashley and Karen. Why am I not surprised? All right, well, that seems to have been the shit. It was a lighter episode. I thought we were going to get a little more tea, but it was cute. All right, well, I'm going to see you soon.
for I don't know what the hell is on today. Oh, that's right, Beverly Hills. Oh, Monique is on the local DC morning show from 6 to 10 a.m. You better pull a portion and get that check. Oh, thank goodness he didn't end it without saying Monique is a force multiplier. You know, for a minute, I thought he had let it go. I thought we were moving on. I thought he was like, okay, this is really awkward to say and even more awkward with my fat pong. But no. No, he gone hang on to it. Alleged what? Alleged who? Allegedly, Lee, Lee, Allegedly. Don't blame. Don't sue. Allegedly. Allegedly. Allegedly.